And welcome back. Carol in Eureka, Montana. Hey, Carol, what's on your mind today? Hey, um, um, I'm a first-time caller, long-time fan, and I've been watching the hearings this morning and um, extreme um, testimony from the uh, Capitol Police. I mean, it's just heart-wrenching. Um, and their goal, it, it was sounding like it was that they wanted the perpetuators of this to be held accountable. Yeah. And I totally agree. But lots of times people can be held accountable and they can still, you know, sail off into the sunset fat, dumb, and happy. I really want to see a comeuppance. And the definition of a comeuppance is a punishment or fate that someone deserves. And so that's what I would like to see. I would like to have the people that perpetuated this from the top down face a comeuppance, and I would just like to go on the record as saying that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Carol, and, and, you know, starting with Donald Trump, but um, this, you know, it, it, there's increasingly it's looking like this may actually be, this January 6th attack may actually be something that they had planned for four years before, that Donald Trump wow. is fully expecting to lose to Hillary Clinton, that uh, Roger Stone and some of his friends had planned this stop the steal thing for 2016. And they just, uh, and now, you know, this, this, this is speculation, but uh, it's not my own speculation. It's a lot of people suggesting this, that they might have just dusted this thing off. I mean, this is how, this is how just absolutely craven. What were the points uh, during the hearings this morning that, that uh, really struck you the most, Carol? Um, just how disrespected they felt and um, that uh, that they had given their lives, uh, put their lives on the line for the, the same Congress that has now turned against them. And they, a lot of them had been in the military or some of them had been in the military and defended our country. And um, they are suffering from PTSD for a lot of reasons. And this just adds fuel to their poor fire and they'll never get over this unless there is a comeuppance. Yeah, yeah, a, uh, a, a, a moment of accountability. It's, it's something that's very important. Um, I agree. Yeah. Carol, thanks so much for the call. It's nice to hear from you. Thank you for taking it. My Good pleasure. Night. My pleasure. Or something. Mark uh, in Sauk City, Wisconsin. Hey, Mark, your thoughts. Hey there. Well, yeah, it, it's, and I got to say what it, I originally said, just they called in to say, to start out. That the original uh, Pledge of Allegiance is actually written by a socialist minister, one Francis Bellamy, and it was sort of generalized because he kind of, I guess, it, from reading about, he actually he'd hoped it'd be uh, the pledge would be used by citizens in any country. I'm reading that from you know, what it says in Wikipedia, and apparently, you know, I've I've read that before. That, but it was, you know, interesting that, that they didn't add the under God until the 1950s because right. we were fighting against the godless communists. The godless communists. <laughs> but you brought up the Confederacy, and what is interesting of note is that in the Confederate Constitution, they didn't call them persons anymore. They called them actually called them slaves. And the preamble to the Confederate Constitution, it was just not bringing a nation together, rather just a collection of states leaving out the whole general welfare clause that is so important in our Constitution. And I think they also left out the common defense um, because the Confederacy was set up to fail from the, from the beginning because, you know, number one, they were underpinning their whole thing on slavery. And number two is, is that they never were fighting, you know, that they're only tangentially fight, fighting as a unified country. Right. The, well, there was no collective army state. or anything like that. You know, they were all the under of the traitor General Lee, who violated his oath, oath to the Constitution, as did most of the leaders in the Confederacy that had served in the United States government. They you know, violated their oath to the U.S. Constitution, took an oath to another state, to, to, the, to the traitor's Confederacy. And then, unfortunately, many of them were let back into the back to serve in, in our government once again after, you know, after only a brief period of time has elapsed after the Civil War. I mean, that the Confederates were lucky we didn't 
you know, reading a little bit of his history, what happened back in days when civil wars happened in the past, the rebellious individuals were not treated so gently as we mm-hmm. treated them here, in spite of Reconstruction, how, how horrible we thought Reconstruction was. In other, in other nation states that experienced civil war of that nature, that many of the combatants and leaders were executed, you know, after the revel- after they were defeated. Sure. I mean, that, that's... Yeah, and, that, and it not, not just, only didn't happen here, we, we embraced the, the Confederate soldiers. Uh, I mean, this was Lincoln's time to heal, you know? Right, and um, I'm not talking about the soldiers, I'm talking about the leadership is, yeah. is that, you know, my biggest beef is against. Yeah. Even though some of the soldiers actually did violate their oaths, too. You know, they originally were soldiers in the Union, probably, and then they went to the Confederacy. Yeah. I mean, it, it just is... I mean, and Holly, I mean, that these guys, the Confederacy, we crushed the Confederacy, and I guess we need to crush it again in words and not in battle again. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's r- remarkable stuff. Mark, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you're a, an astute observer of, uh, <laughs> of history and politics. Um, it seems to me that this attack on the Capitol building on January 6th that we saw this, you know, compelling um, hearing and, and testimony this morning about um, is pretty much unparalleled outside of 1861, outside of the, the you know, the, the declaration of secession by the, by the Confederacy and the, and the Civil War. I, I can't think of any other time in American history where we have had a, uh, an organized, orchestrated, uh, run from the inside, run from within the, the elected political structure of America, attempt to subvert the law of the United States and, over, and overthrow the government of the United States. Can you? No, we we have we've had we've had traitorous attempts in the past. Aaron Burr and his collaboration with James Wilkerson, and I sure. I pick up some of the stuff only tangentially because I'm not a I kind of skim through it and I find little bits that interest me and dive into them. But I mean, with it, this is just the, these guys are just traitors, and I mean, and we need to ferret them out that in the that are serving in the Congress right now and expose them. I mean, just to, to drop the shroud from them, and they're not going to be like. Uh, the story about a Phaedra, was it the um, the prostitute, they dropped the robes and they found her not guilty That before the uh, Athenian Senate or something like that, or before her judges, that um, because she's so beautiful, they couldn't find These guys have to be exposed for the ugly traitors that they are. I mean, that Holly and, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Barbert, they may think that they're serving the country, but they're serving a different country than they took the oath to. Yeah, I'm with you. Mark, thank you very much for the call. Thank you, brother. Yeah, always nice to hear from you. Uh, Lines are open.